Hello everyone, my name is Patricia Malensi and this is The Struggle is Really Diverse. This is our ongoing Q&A series in which we explore topics within the mental health field, particularly in regards to diverse and marginalized people. If you are a member of one of those groups and would like to submit a question, topic, or suggestion that may be featured in one of our future episodes, feel free to access the link to our survey in the description box below. You can also get access to that survey by following us on Instagram at UofACAPS. All right, let's get started. Hi. In this episode, we're going to be exploring the topic of coming out. In particular, when and if you should come out to your family members, whoever those folks may be in your life. This is a very complicated process that involves a lot of steps and things to consider. And in my experiences working with folks within the LGBTQ plus population, every person's story is different. And there are so many different facts to, to consider such as how welcoming or open they are to folks of the LGBTQ community, how much do they know about LGBTQ folks, the list goes on and on. And because there are so many different stories and situations, there isn't one particular magic formula or solution that fits everyone. So what I would like to do today is to focus on some factors to consider before deciding to come out and some things you should do before and during and afterwards if you decide to come out. The answer is up to you. And so that could be one of the things that is complicated and frustrating about this process for a lot of people is that sometimes people come to commissions for answers, straight answers, and that's not necessarily the case. But what we can do is kind of help you in giving you the space for you to process and lay out all the factors in the table and then coming to a decision that works for you. You know, this is your situation. And so whatever choice you decide to do, making it in a way that you are comfortable with that, that decision going on forward. So on that note, based on my experiences and based on the information from a Psychology Today article, we're gonna be exploring what those factors are. So let's jump right into it. So first we're going to be talking about particular situations or factors that if they are present in your life, you may want to consider holding off on coming out to your family. And that's because these particular factors and situations may end up doing more harm than good for your own personal well-being. So what am I talking about? All right, so consider not coming out to your family, at least by the way, if you're in a situation where your family members are openly saying homophobic or transphobic comments to your face, saying disparaging things about the LGBTQ community to the point that it creates a hostile environment for yourself and for anyone else that comes into situations where they're talking to these members of these families. Okay. That is a very difficult situation to be in for yourself, obviously. And so it's one of those situations where if you know that you have people that are consistently saying horrible and terrible things about the LGBTQ community, you kind of want to hold back into seeing, okay, how can you first take care of yourself? And secondly, how can you navigate in being in a situation with family members that are going to consistently say these things going forward, whether or not you come out? And so it could be a situation where maybe after learning more about them and how they op operate, you can determine whether or not they would be willing to change their views. But it's really hard to say. So one of those situations, one of those situations where it's going to be really hard for you to jump in if they're already saying all these terrible things. 
not saying that it's something that you can never approach, right? But it's one of those factors where, you know, you want to make sure to kind of take care of yourself and have your support systems in place and to surround yourself with people that are lifting you up, right? Uh, especially they'll be supportive during these times where you're not getting that type of support, right? You want to make sure that you have at least a community for you to go to that can authentically accept you for who you are to combat all the negative disparaging comments from your family that is not giving you that love and respect that you deserve. In a similar note, you may want to consider not telling them or delaying telling them if you feel that they would threaten you if you were to come out. Unfortunately, there's been a history of harmful practices that people believe will scare other people straight, like conversion therapy or even physical or verbal violence. And all these people are perpetrating these acts as a way to straighten out their loved ones or doing whatever they can to kind of suppress something that is authentically themselves and isn't harmful. So if you're in a situation like that where you have some family members that may do these harmful things, you want to consider not telling them because that's not good for your own safety, right? You can continue to live authentically you, right? But it will probably look a little bit different, you know, than the outwardly coming out and telling them all the details of your life they may be family members that don't need to know all the details of your life especially if you have that sense or if they've already threatened based on other option uh, observations that you've seen whether it is in your own family members or other people in their life right if they're saying these things and threatening conversion therapy or physical or, or verbal violence that is not something that you need to deal with they don't need to know that information the thing about coming out is that you can choose who gets that information, right? Not everybody in their life needs to have the same level of information into your life, right? So these, this would be certain circumstances where you consider, okay, who needs to know all the details of my life and who doesn't? Or kind of like a, they don't need to know, they don't need to ask about it, I'm not going to volunteer that information because you're looking out for yourself. So that's perfectly fine, especially in this situation. Another fact to consider delaying or not telling your family members is if you are financially dependent on them. This is a very common situation that I come across clients in my therapy, particularly with college students. They're in this kind of in-between stage in their life where they are approaching independence. Independence is a broad term, socially, mentally, and also financially, but they're still having to rely on their family for certain things, right? Which is paying for their education, could be their housing, rent, food, etc. right? So if you're a person who is financially dependent on your parents to the point that you believe that they would take that money away if you were to come out, you don't have to come out to them right away. Oftentimes I've had conversations with clients about figuring out a way for you to kind of get your stuff into order. If you feel like, okay, this is something that you want to do relatively soon, thinking about ways to kind of cover your bases, if it is a situation where you may get money taken away from you, or having conversations with people about thinking about, okay, for the short term, maybe not giving all the details of their life to their family, and then waiting until they're completely financially independent to start having that conversation. Money is a very, very tricky thing. And so it would be a, a horrible situation to give that information and then finding that there's no place for you to live or to go to school, right? So it's kind of thinking about, well, how can I either save up my money in order for me to take care of my bases or wait until a time where I am financially independent and you can start having that conversation. So another factor to consider delaying or not telling is if you would be devastated if they were to react badly. 
having this conversation is a, is a very difficult conversation. So it's one of those things you have to kind of go up being mentally prepared for what are out, whatever outcome it can be. The thing is, there's there's a lot of things that outside you control. You can control how you're going to tell them, when you're going to tell them, things like that. But how they respond, that's totally out of your hands. And if you know that you're at a point now where you would be completely devastated if they reacted badly, maybe it's the time to kind of step back and think of ways for you to take care of yourself so you can get to a point where you could be okay regardless of how they respond. So giving yourself a little bit more time for you to get to that point. It's obviously not going to be perfect, and I'm not saying that a negative response, you're never going to have a positive response. You're, you're going to have a positive response for them behaving or, or reacting badly. No, but if it's a point where you know that your world is going to be shattered right now because you feel like they're the only source of support, you don't have your support system outside, yet maybe being able to find those pieces in those blocks to first build up your self-esteem and acceptance of yourself and then also finding other people that you can relate to and support you as well. Those things can take some time. And the last factor to consider is if your gut's telling you not to. And as I mentioned before, you know, people that are helping you in this process, like mental health counselors, ourselves, we don't know your, your story, we don't know your family as well as you do. And so if you have a gut feeling like, mm, this is not the time, that's completely fine, right? You don't want to be in a situation where anyone else is forcing you to come out, right? You have the right to choose when and how you want to do it. And if your gut is telling you, oh, trust it, trust your intuition, because chances are it's right. There's some sort of factor that even if you're not completely aware of, is telling you to wait a minute. So please honor and trust your instincts and your feelings on this matter. All right, now that we've talked about some consideration factors, let's jump into the scenario in which you've considered everything and you deciding that yes, it is the right time to come out to your family. What should you do to prepare yourself beforehand? All right, let's jump into some of those factors. The first one is thinking about a worst case scenario, planning for the worst case scenario. This is a little bit different advice than what I typically give clients that are struggling with negative and unhelpful thoughts. Typically when we're dealing with issues of anxiety and depression, our mind tends to think about the worst case negative scenarios and considering them to be facts even though there's really no indication of that. So in those circumstances, I talk about staying away from the worst case scenario because it's not really beneficial and it's not really true. Most oftentimes we think of the, some type of worst case scenario that has almost zero probability of happening. This is a different case, right? Because we know, just as we talked about the factors beforehand, that there could be some negative consequences depending on your situation and your family's views. So it is important to consider planning out for the worst case scenario. So what I'm talking about is, say for example, you come out and your parents cut off your financial or your finances for school. Um, they kick you out of the house things like that, right? Do you have some place to stay? Do you have people that can support you financially? Do you have a job and some sort of funds or saving to support yourself for the remainder time of being in school? These are some things to seriously consider and to write out a plan or figure out a plan to cover your bases. If you're deciding, hey, it's the time and your family ends up giving you these negative consequences, right? just come some sort of practical thinking to prepare yourself beforehand. The next thing to think about before you're telling your family is to gather your support. So I kind of mentioned about supports a little bit earlier in this video, throughout this video. It is really important to have a person or a group of people who love you authentically, they accept you for all that you are, 
and they're going to be there to help you and talk through the issues that you're going through as you're preparing to tell them your family and afterwards you want to make sure you have those people on speed dial i don't think speed dial is a thing anymore but you know have your contacts ready whether it's texting phone call set up you can set up a situation where you let them know say hey you know i'm thinking about talking to my family thursday evening you know i really don't know how it's gonna go would you mind you know maybe touching base with me afterwards like are you available thursday evening in case i need to reach out to you things like that or texting them or something like that, right? So it's really good to have a plan in place so that you know, okay, regardless of this outcome, you're gonna be able to have contact with people that support you and, and care for you and your identity within the LGBTQ community. That is so important and hopefully can give you a little bit more comfort in easing into that conversation, knowing that you have people that are backing you up in that moment. And the last thing that you wanna think about as you're preparing to tell them is deciding that you're going to be okay no matter what happens. This is a fact, right? So I'm saying this as deciding and accepting the fact that you're going to be okay no matter what happens. That you have the right to tell this information to your family if you so choose. And regardless of how they end up reacting or saying that hopefully with your systems in place, your supports in place, that you're going to be okay. All right, so let's talk about as you're telling them. So first off, you want to be able to pick a time and a place. A time and a place where, you know, first of all, they'll be available and open to hear. And so once again, you know your family, so you wanna work it out so that it's, it's a time and place that's best for you and best for who you're talking to, but particularly best for you. So for example, the where, is it better for you to tell them at their place so that you can leave afterwards? <laughs> depending on how it goes or if you want to invite them to your place if you want it to be in a public place like a restaurant or outside or walking around kind of thinking of things like that where do you think you feel more comfortable having this conversation in the time too is it something that early in the day would work out better for you later in the day would work out better for you things like that um, also another thing to consider is, especially with college students, typically the time they visit families around the holidays. And so holidays can be a very stressful time. So, but it kind of depends on you. Is it something that you want to talk about at the tail end or before the holidays, whatever that is, or maybe another time? Do you want it to be in a crowded room with a bunch of other people? Do you want to tell one family member at a time? Do you want to tell two? Do you want to tell them all at the same time? Just some things to think about, like the actual logistics of it. All right, so let's say that you picked your time and your place, everything. They're right there, they're willing to listen, they're open to listen, and you start talking. You want to first talk about how much you care about them and how much you appreciate this relationship and you want to maintain this relationship right if that's if that's the goal for you uh, I should say so if you're coming at this from an angle of being like I already have a strong relationship with my family I want to be able to maintain the relationship starting off from that is a good fitting because that is the underlying goal here right that you're not giving this information as a way to separate the family which obviously you're not although some people may interpret that way unfortunately but by establishing the fact that you're coming at this as a thing that's supposed to bring you together because you care for them is a great way to come off right obviously that is if that's the situation for you that's probably going to be part of your goals and it's good to express that in the moment as well the next you want to do is also talk about and reassure them that you are happy and healthy 
Now this may seem kind of obvious, but what we've noticed from people that struggle with accepting people's gender and sexual identities is that they, they may mistakenly think of it as coming from a negative place, that the person may be suffering from some sort of set of other issues, like maybe drug problems or mental health issues or something is going on, or maybe they were assaulted or something like that, and that's why they're coming out, which isn't true. So it is important to highlight that fact of being like, you know, I'm coming out, I'm happy, I'm healthy, I have people that care for me, et cetera, and et cetera, right? But you're coming from a place of like, this is a positive aspect of your being that you are sharing with your family. All right, so you continue with your conversation, you give the information out. Another thing to consider is to don't assume that they will be able to adjust and accept everything right away. And this is perhaps the hardest part of doing this is that people come in with the expectations. They have their own expectations of how they want it to turn out, right? They want it to be, you know, great and perfect. And, and that is something that obviously people deserve, right? They deserve it to, to have this positive feedback, this positive reaction. But unfortunately for some folks, they don't get there right away if they do get there and so it is important for you to be able to let your information sit with them for a beat and to not anticipate a positive grand reaction right away um, i've had conversations with clients where you know immediately it's come out and it's great and they you know they hug and they cheer and they say things you know their family says things about oh we love you no matter what and obviously that's a great perfect scenario but it's not always the case sometimes some people they sit in silence and sometimes for people that are looking at the silence you know they may think like oh that's a terrible thing and they're not necessarily right it could be something where someone's processing maybe they weren't expecting this they were shocked by the information this was not what they were thinking at all and so they may need some silence right silence you know however long it takes for them to process um some people may have questions or a negative reaction right away and so no matter what the person the reaction is giving to you you know being able to let them sit with their um, feelings and say that you know i know this is a lot for you to process you know um if you need time to think about it like you know i understand and you know just wanted to be able to express these things and you know i'm here if you want to talk and we can continue this conversation you know i think that's the thing about this is that it's not going to be a one and done conversation that even if your family reacts positively, this isn't gonna be the only time that you're gonna be able to talk about this and in, in your identity to them, especially if it's something that they weren't really thinking at, at all, right? Um, or open to considering that their family member may be part of the LGBTQ community, right? So just being able to kind of let them sit with that. Um, and oftentimes, it could be them processing a loss. And when I talk about a loss, let me be very specific about it. Sometimes people may be grieving the path of what their family member may be going through. So if the person is talking about having same sex or same gender attraction, you know, they're coming out as say like gay or lesbian, for example, um, family members may be kind of sitting with the, the loss of, you know, seeing what that person's life would end up being in terms of marriage and children and things like that and yes we all know that gay people can get married and gay people can have children but the script the heteronormative cisnormative script is something that is still very ingrained in a lot of people and so it's one of those things where people have to kind of take a beat and to process that okay it's not going to what i'm thinking is kind of ingrained in my mind as to what you know a person's life would be like and so kind of going in line with this one of the last things i would like for you to think about when you're telling them is in addition for you know giving them some time to process being able to give them resources right 
you know, talking about, oh, I have some books or some websites or articles and things like that for people to, for you to just look at that are, you know, useful for people that are going through similar situations. I'm gonna put some info in the description box below. And so being able to have those things handy may be good because you can give them things for them to look at as they're adjusting to it and hopefully you can make that adjustment process smoother for you. So let's talk about afterwards. So after you tell them, you give them all the resources, everything like that, make sure you have something for you to do to take care of yourself. Self-care, this is gonna be most likely a heavy and difficult conversation. So kind of going back to the idea of gathering your support, if you set up so that you can meet someone or talk to someone or text someone, that's good. Taking a walk outside, decompressing, doing something that's restful or relaxing, maybe deep breathing, guided meditation, things like that, um, some light exercise, something to kind of let your body decompress everything that's going through. This is, it's, it's, you know, it's a, it's a very difficult situation to be in, so you want to make sure to take care of yourself as much as you're doing to kind of communicate your information to folks. And one of the last recommendations is being able to hang in there and, you know, for most individuals, this process will get better over time, right? Even if the family has some negative, strong negative reactions in the beginning, there could definitely be a point where they are able to move forward, apologize for what they've said, um, and you can get to the point where you have you know that relationship that you want but if you are in a situation where the type of response of the relationship that you wanted to get isn't happening that's okay too it's an unfortunate situation but i think being able to once again lean on those supports and creating a system a support system for you where people can support you for all that you are is really important in those instances you know People talk about choosing their families, right? You're born into a family, but choosing your family. And so if that family you were born into isn't necessarily fulfilling those needs, you know, you can have some sort of relationship with them. If that's the way you want to, it may not be the relationship that you're thinking of or as close as you think of. But if you have other people on your side that fulfill those other needs of, you know, a sense of belonging, especially in regards to your gender and sexual identity, then I think that is okay as well. So I hope the information that was presented in this video was helpful for you. And if it is, I would love for you to do a couple things. Please like this video and please make sure to subscribe to our channel. And make sure when you are hitting subscribe that you are clicking that bell icon to be notified for each new episode of our ongoing series. This has been The Struggle is Really Diverse. Until next time.